Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. I got a special guest with us tonight. We got Clint Richardson in the house. If you guys don't already know, he literally wrote the book on the straw man. You guys, this is a over 1,000 pages. I mean, you see I got my sticky notes in here. This is a gold mine of information. Clint Richardson is the most diligent researcher I've ever come across. And he is the expert not only on the straw man, but other areas as well, based on uh, his endless amounts of research on many different things. So we got him on tonight. Now we want to address uh, something in particular, because as of late, um, you know, you might have seen if you follow Clint and I's podcast that we've been covering different gurus and the alternative law space. I call it the outlaw space. Um, and we've covered everything from state national gurus to sovereignty gurus to UCC guru. I mean, we've covered pretty much the whole gambit, but there's one guy we have left out. And uh, this guy, he calls himself Dr. KL, Mr. Beneficiary. I know, what a weird mashup for a name. And look, we're, we're not here to attack him. Um, now, I recently have had a couple of clients that I'm working with that have worked with KL in the past, went through his whole process, and um, let's just say they wanted to reach out to me after, after they realized some things about his process. Um, so now there are some problem areas from what I can tell, just looking on the outside and from what I've, I've heard from other people. But again, we're not here to attack KL. We're just here to maybe shed some light on some things, maybe steer him in the right direction if he sees this. <laughs> uh, so anyways, so... Dr. KL, he's been pushed on big channels. He's being cross-promoted, um, which in my opinion, I find that rather suspicious. Um, now, figureheads that push KL, and they say that you know his process is perfected. He's better than all the other gurus. Um, his <laughs> solutions actually work, um, but we'll kind of go through... Right, exactly. Which which false god would you like to do? Well, and that's the thing. Uh, the alternative space they love to turn these figureheads into idols. Uh, I call them idols or false gods, like Clint said. And uh, unfortunately, people think that they are the next savior or something, you know? And <laughs> so we'll kind of go through how even KL, uh, as great as these big channels say he is, um, and these hosts has supposedly gone through his process and advocate for it. I mean, after you see what he all tells people to do, I don't know how you could come to that conclusion. Let's, let's start by revisiting just a couple of things because the immediate... You know, you're immediately going to know it's fraud. Um, and and please understand, it's not my opinion. It's not, you know, you can go and you can read all about sham trusts or trusts that would be in court when looked at uh, professionally or legally would not pass the rules, the basic rules of a trust. One of those things, like I said, uh, we keep saying that trust in re, you know, it really does take trust on behalf of the parties involved to form a trust. But see, it doesn't just stop at that. I, I, I got to go further than that. I got to say that if you're going to be using the trust model and your goal is not to harm, steal, or in some other way injure, right? In which case you would do some of these things that gurus teach you. Uh, then you, what I mean by you must trust who you're in trust with, 
you must it means you must be in honor All right your participation in the trust must be an honorable one and that's the hard part because one of the things I noticed that this guy is telling people is he's, he's using terms that generally aren't used except in specific legal situations like the grantor of a trust, right? Which is a, a perfectly legitimate term in certain uses, only though for a revocable trust, first of all, um, where and, and also only for a one that would be probably considered to to have um to be taxable because you become you're you're the the grantor as he says but you're also pointing yourself as the beneficiary of the trust or whatever so these are not the types of trust that you should be being involved in and i think that's one of the first things these are not the same kind of things that you would want on the private side of things these would be very more like these would be more that you'd go to an attorney for, right? You'd go and <laughs> you'd, uh, uh, another way of saying that is it would be more for people you don't trust. Or it would be for yourself to have some gain where you're trying to avoid taxes or estate uh, fees, estate taxes, that kind of thing. So that's not the kind of thing that we're trying to get people to look at. But what I what I, I just want to say again, it means that you must stand in honor. Not just that you trust somebody, but that that person's in honor and you are in honor, and that the goal of the trust meets the ver the basically. I mean, I'll I'll say the rules of court, but you know the rules of like I said, just read all these uh, documents and articles on sham trust, and you'll see right away that most of the things these guys are promising just it's just not true unless you're deeply steep in the legal side of things. So definitely not for a private trust. Yeah, your point. Um, now, there there can be grantors in both a revocable and irrevocable. Um, that's the person who's transferring the property over to the trust, right? But you have a point about the revocable because in that the grantor can still be the trustee in the revocable. Now, in irrevocable, most states, they don't allow you to be both the grantor and the trustee. So that's where a lot of people go wrong. Um, so, yeah, very, very well said. Um, right. Now, he's not so different, not so different. from telling people to get the secure party creditor and be both the creditor and the debtor. Yeah, it's a similar, you know, false dialectic that they're creating that you can somehow be the opposite of what you actually are in the in the trust or in the the, the parties, you know. It's just you can't be both parties. And yet that's what they teach. So Yeah, so um Let's go through what he all tells people to do. Um, now, again, I've heard this from people that have gone through his process. Maybe I'm incorrect. Maybe they're telling me the wrong thing. I highly doubt that, but just saying this is allegedly what I've heard, okay? <laughs> um, let's see. Let me pull up my notes real quick. One of, the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the things is that everything is, is that everything is a trust. Like money is a trust. Title means there is a trust agreement. Uh, the, the, the dollar is a trust. Everything is a trust. Trust, 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 trust. And that is just not cor a correct way of looking at things. Like the whole country is a trust. The government is a trust. Uh, it, it's just a false, uh, you know a false again a false dialectic set up to really confuse i think people on what a trust actually is or what a trust would actually be uh, what form or what pieces of the trust would actually be accepted in a in an actual uh, controversy towards the trust 
Yeah, it, exactly. He's one of these guys that says everything's a trust. It definitely is not. Um, this court is a trust. Right. He's one of these people that says even course of trust, which is completely ridiculous. Okay, let's, uh, we're going to put that myth to bed. Because uh, if everything was a trust, it, the world would be a much different place. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't be practical either to use a trust for everything. Um, so anyways, uh, so what he all tells people to do now, this is from what I've heard secondhand, okay? From what I've heard, he has you form a what's called a private business trust, which I hate to break it to you guys, but there is no such thing as a private business trust. Um, and it's actually on the IRS's, uh, uh, what do they call it? The uh, scam trusts. They have a list of scam types of trusts and uh, they tell you clearly on their website, a private business trust does not exist or is recognized um, either by the legal system or the IRS itself. And some people might hear that and think, oh, well, that's a good thing. But no, all the protection you think that would give you, it wouldn't give you any type of protection at all. In fact, um, from what I've heard, he doesn't even have you guys use the trust how a trust should be used. He's and now, this is not only him pushing the private business trust. He didn't invent this. This has been a myth that's been spreading the last couple of years. And essentially, a lot of gurus push the private business trust as, hey, you don't need an LLC uh, to do business. You can conduct business under a trust. And let me tell you, that is a complete misuse and misapplication of what a trust should be used for. Now, remember, guys, a trust, it's not a magical remedy for everything. Um, it's only a tool for estate planning purposes, okay? You can't run business transactions through it. It would be stupid to do so. It's going to raise red flags with the IRS right away. The bank is going to raise red flags with the bank. Uh, second of all, why would you do that? The, the trust is not designed to deal with the public. It's quite the opposite. It's designed to deal with the private. So why would you mix the public with the private and misuse of trust and raise red flags, that's what the LLC is for. The LLC is to do business under, right? Now, another thing he tells you guys to do, um, if you go through his process, which, again, there's nothing unique about his process. He didn't reinvent anything, even though people think he does. He tells you guys to get a DBA, okay? Now, we've covered that already, but for those of you that haven't heard my perspective on the DBA, it doesn't matter. I, you and I could get a DBA for whatever, but that doesn't, that's still me. If I go set up a DBA called, uh, let's say, uh, Green Bag, <laughs> that's what I'm seeing right in front of me. If I get a DBA saying Green Bag, and when I charge you guys, you'll see Green Bag, ooh, okay, so what? That's nothing. You still have to sign off with the Secretary of State to get the DBA. Someone has to sign for it, right? So it doesn't give you any privacy. That's still you legally. You're just using a nickname. The question is, the question who, is who or what, or what is doing business as Greenback? Who or what? Who? And the answer is, it's the straw man. It's the person that's already of belonging to the United States. Therefore, you're liable to the public law. You can't. There's not. There's, you're not gonna. You're not gonna leave the public, or you're not gonna leave the matrix by using a character in the matrix, right? You, you, to, to do business as means you, meaning the person you are agent for, <laughs> are basically, you're using your person, you're signing with your name and your social security and all that, and you're getting a do, doing business as, that does not in any way alter the source of the uh, the transaction is still reverting to the person because without the person, the DBA would have no, there's no, no liabilities, no, there's nothing to put it back on. So no, they're not going to, but then privately, uh, outside of the United States, it's a whole different story, right? So that's why you recommend the LLC model, but it's just, again, you got to remember if you're signing your name to anything, 
what is that name? It's a person of the United States that you're using in a guarantee or a surety sort of as a and so you're bonded, you're responsible for it. You're you're in liability for anything that so what? You're doing business as another name. It comes back to the name that you used under it. So no, do not do business as because you're still doing business as Clint Richardson or Brandon Sterling or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Uh, someone in the chat says, uh, in Minnesota, DBA separates you as the name holder. Yeah, it, some secretaries of state, they don't require you to sign off on it, but it doesn't matter because that doesn't give you any liability protection. If I was under any controversy attached to my DBA, I'm 100% liable as a straw man, right? So it <laughs> doesn't matter even if you have your trust or your LLC sign off to own the DBA, it's still going to be attached to you it either also, way. So it also goes back to law of agency because now you become, in a sense, the principal of that new uh, agent. And so you're, that agent that do, doing business name is doing business in, in your purview and you, uh, you are acting as now the principal, but you're still the agent of the main principal, which gave you the name in the first place. Remember, the agent is not responsible for the actions of the principal, right? Right? Exactly. Now, the next step after the DBA, he tells you to open a sole proprietorship bank account, which same thing, sole proprietor is just you. That's not a legal separation like an LLC can give you. It's you doing business under your straw man, right? So again, that's a horrible idea. No one should do a sole proprietorship. If I'm doing business under a sole proprietorship, there is no legal separation. If there was liability to occur, I'm 100% on the hook. <laughs> Very uh, unsimilar to an LLC, right? So you again... You, you mean your estate. Your yes, estate, that's... Your personal everything. Exactly right, which... Obviously, we don't want. There's nothing private about that. Mm -hmm. So now, he, and then after that, he tells you to form a corporate soul. Oh, no. <laughs> Which uh, Clint and I, we've busted through that whole thing in our uh, 508 videos that we've done. Um, the corporate soul it, it works, can it, it works for the queen. Okay, she's a different corporation soul in whatever province. She's the queen in right of freaking Canada, right? That's a different corporation soul. Then she goes to a province. She's the queen in right of Ontario, and she's the queen in right of Australia. And these are all different corporations that she appears as a corporation soul. What corporation soul does in a church type of situation is instead of incorporating the whole thing, you're only incorporating the 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 building. Right? You're not incorporating the people, in other words, which is why the Catholic Church, the Mormon Church, can openly participate in politics, okay? We're not arguing that corporation souls don't exist or, you know, it's that, again, it's kind of like UCC or anything else. These, stuff, these things are not designed for the little guy. Now, if you, if you form some mega, mega church and you want to, you know, do as the, the big you know, powerful royal bloodlines do, well then by all means. But for your personal stuff, the corporation's soul model is another thing that you'll find uh, listed as one of the scams that the IRS is very aware of. So be very careful. Yes, on their website, the IRS does go through that. They're very well aware of this scam that people try to use to get out of taxes using a corporate soul. Um, so don't mess with that unless you're an actual 501c3, right? Which none of you guys are, from what I can tell. Nor should you. I don't advocate 501c3s at all. Um, so anyways, that's another problem. Again, how many times they're not private? Exactly. And just to cover our bases, there is no such thing as a 508, okay? It's a provision for 501c3s that are recognized by the IRS. It's not its own independent thing or entity or structure, okay? So that's another scam. We've busted through that in our previous video. Um, 
So anyways, now next thing he does uh, is tell you to put on a UCC1 lean on your straw man. Okay, and again, this is what I've heard secondhand, but this is what they told me, people that have worked with him. And then he says, become a 19, or a pre-1933 Alabama State National. <laughs> now, Clint... Uh, is that Anna Von Wright? Anna Von Right, that's, that's the thing. He meshes in stuff we've heard from Anna Von Wright, David Strait, all of these different... He's, again, he's just repeating the same stuff. And there's nothing special. Um, yeah, and, and to be clear, in my videos, I debunk, I even read a court case where the judge calls Anna Von Wright a self-proclaimed false judge. She's not a judge. She's, just, she's calling herself that and basically calls her out for being full of crap. Um, I also have her saying that state nationals don't exist. That's her own creation. There is no recognition by governments around the world of anything called a state national. And to understand that, you have to understand, first of all, a national, that's a spiritual thing. It's not a, it's not even a real thing. It's like a, it's like a spiritual connection between people. That's what a nation is, right? Then you have the nation state, which is the United States or the United Kingdom, of which you are a national of, but that is a completely different type of corporate structure it's not the same as the spiritual thing the spiritual connection between people we're no longer a people that's the whole problem before you know they trick every country in the world to forming a republic self-governing republic where the people are the government and then you know a matter of months or years later they come in they form a constitution and so, same thing with every country constitution is formed constitution of bangladesh in 1972 constitution of this constitution of that and that creates the nation state, which is an internationally recognized, perfected, uh, in other words, the debts are now perfected and recognized by the international body. And now you have no longer government of the people, which would be a nation. Now you have a nation state, which is a corporation that rules and actually militarily defeats, conquers, purchases the people, and then... I mean, that's what we are under. That's why we say, when, when I say you're a prisoner of war, I'm not joking. You are a, you are a conquered people. You are a purchased people. I, I can't get that through your head enough. So the way you act in comparison to that is, is really what it boils down to. Are you acting privately from it or are you acting under it? Responsible people, self-governing people, are still able to act in a way that they don't have to be in this apprenticeship, this uh, indenture that we call citizenship. But these guys are steering you in the wrong direction. They're steering you in a direction where you're getting more entangled with the public side to the point where you're going to go to jail, get fined, lose your property, lose your estate, because you're being unhonorable. You're, pu you're putting liens on people. You're doing all this crap. Which the which again we we've gone to the IRS website so many times to show you they they're aware of the scam. You're not aware of it. You're the one participating in it. You're the one doing it. These gurus are not getting in trouble for the things that you do. That's the problem. So nobody seems to catch on until it's too late. And that's exactly what this guy is doing. He's teaching you to do things that will eventually catch up with you that are already listed as scams we know for a fact out of out of Anna Von Wright's own mouth that no there is no state national the government doesn't recognize that you don't get a special passport that's a lie there's only one passport office and it only goes to US citizens which is automatically a US national there is no state national in fact technically there really aren't any states they're not recognized as sovereign entities anymore we're all united states citizens so you're gonna either you're either gonna go back to that du jour sort of thing that we imagine as the republic or you're going to act in the indenture the apprentice that was given to you at birth because you don't know any better and you're being steered towards it on a constant basis and this is what we're trying to see over and over 
the same damn thing is being put at you. Now, I, I'm Brandon, if you don't mind, man, I'm going to read someone else's take on this, okay? The law offices of uh, Joseph Defoe, all right? He, he lists this, so now see if this sounds familiar to any of you guys who are going to these gurus, not listening to us, not, you know, have some patience, let's figure this out together, don't, don't just go press the button and see what happens, right? Let's learn, let's figure it all out together, let us get something together that is actually going to be beneficial for everybody. He says the, the pure trust scam, sound familiar? The so-called pure trust, also known as the constitutional trust or the common law trust, amongst many other names, is neither a pure nor a legitimate trust. It is a scam and continues to be perpetuated for upwards of 50 years now. Part of the tax protest movement that's going on for 50 years, just as we said. It's, it's rinse, wash, repeat. Improve, make it sound even better, promise a little more money, a little rain, gold at the end of the rainbow, and you're, you're suddenly following a rainbow that doesn't exist. It is promoted as asset protection against creditors and income tax freedom from the IRS. Not one time have we said this is a tax shelter or that you're trying to avoid taxes. You're trying to be private from it. <laughs> you're, not, you're not opening something in the public and saying, okay, I'm protected from the public. That doesn't make sense. Okay. Unfortunately, the opposite is true. The California courts and the IRS have been combating these trusts for years. See People versus Lineman, L Y N A M two sixty one C A L A P P two D four ninety in nineteen sixty eight. All the way back then, folks. That's how long this has been going on. IRS notice ninety seven twenty four. You want to look that up, Brandon? IRS notice ninety seven dash twenty four at uh, IRS dot gov. So he says, let's unravel the mystery. According to pure trust promoters, American English common law allows the creation of separate legal entities into which anyone can irrevocably transfer their property or management, or excuse me, for management and protection by others, as the entity is created under the English common law and not any state's own statute. We're not saying that. The pure trust is allegedly... Uh, independent of any state sovereign law. No, 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 no. It's not subject to, to any state law. No, that's not what we're promoting. Nor answerable to any uh, legal enforcement under state statutory laws. The promoters argue that the United States Constitution and certain U.S. Supreme Court cases validate pure trusts. I'll tell you what it does validate. It, it validates privacy. All right? I mean, it's, it's a big difference. As anyone with formal legal training recognizes, however, the proof is a very misleading and purely argumentative. There is no true legal support for the pure trust as they are drafted. Promoters often use guile and charm. I'm, sound familiar? I know I'm not very charming. I mean, I, I don't try. Right? The truth isn't very charming. Promoters often use guile and charm to deceive people wanting to believe all the good things about pure trust. Not attorneys themselves. They justify uh, avoiding licensed attorneys, right? Avoid licensed attorneys. Do as we say, not as they do, because attorneys only prepare ordinary statutory trust under state law. Okay, now, we, we, I was just talking to Brandon a while ago about private banking, about all these different things that, no, these attorneys do actually participate, but again... As George Carlin said, you ain't in the club. And until you get in the club, you ain't going to be <laughs> helped by any attorney. Attorneys either do not understand pure trusts or they do not wish to let you in on their inside secret. Well, there's a little truth to that. <laughs> like the story of the emperor's new clothes, however, many people simply are unwilling to admit to themselves that they do not see what in fact does not exist my God, when it comes to the lack of legal substance. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the emperor really is exposed when it comes to pure trust. So what is the truth? The truth is these trusts are shams. As I said, a sham trust, go look up, uh, that can get you into a great deal of trouble with the IRS. They otherwise create a great legal mess. These trusts will not provide you with any legitimate asset protection against your creditors. Uh, moreover, as these trusts are not drafted by attorneys, they are technically deficient in how they operate. So even if they potentially provided asset protection and tax minimization, talking about 
the, the public aspect of it, right? The internal flaws of these trusts make them hard, if not impossible, to administer. And that's what it boils down to. When you see a sham trust, it's because it can't be administered because he who formed the trust was not clear or asked for something that was not uh, covered by trust law, right? It, 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 there, can the trust be administered? That's the question you've got to ask. Now, if, if I have a trust... And it says, uh, I'm a member of a fictitious common law, state, sovereign, national, state, national thing. And here's my national passport to prove it. <laughs> well, that's not, it's impossible to administer because there is no such, it doesn't exist. How do you administer a trust with a, an executor or a trustee or a trustor that in fact, is basing his identity as trustor on a fictional thing that doesn't isn't even recognized in either local or international law. You you cannot administer a sham trust. All that glitters is not gold. Make sure you secure your future wisely rather than buying into something that really is too good to be true. And I think that's a very very simple way of saying stop being dummies. Stop stop going to people who are using terms that you know we've already dismissed as purely fraud, right? But stop going to these guys that are using tax movement, tax protest movement things. Stop, stop trying to do something that is, I mean, for God's sake, go read some trust law. Go read some cases about trust. Read why trusts were not allowed to exist past the life of the, of the one who created it, right? Why the estate goes to probate instead of being in a trust. There's, there's so much information out there. You'd be, I mean, and look, I, Okay, even when it comes to myself or Brandon, you should not be just going to Brandon and say, hey, create me a trust. You should learn. You should learn what are the fundamentals of a trust. What is the grantor, the successor, the, I mean, what are all these terms that go along with it? How do they apply? Will they apply in my case? Um, is it, are, are, am I being charitable or am I being greedy? All right, it, which never works. I, it, it's just, you gotta, and or am I acting like a corporation that's, that just wants to profiteer off of the misery of others? You gotta be, you got just take some time and learn before you take the step. I mean, that is why we are here is is, is to fundamentally teach these things, but it's not something that could just be taught in a in a show. You know, don't tune in to the, the local, your your favorite guru radio show host and expect to come out the other end having a PhD in trust. And certainly don't pretend that you do. I certainly don't pretend that I do, but I know enough to know when I see a sham <laughs> right in front of my face. Yeah, very well said. Um, someone recently shared with me uh, Beth Martins, actually, who's here in the chat. Uh, she shared with me the book called The Art of Passing the Buck or something along those lines. And I spread read through the first part. And let me tell you, I could already tell it was a sham book by the first few pages. It was pushing the common law trust, how it's not statutory, all the stuff. A pure, trust, a, pure trust. a pure trust that I just read about, also called common law trust. Was it a constitutional? <laughs> yes, actually, yes. And um, now KL, he, I'll give him this. He at least knows not to use common law trust. So he's trying to use this private business trust format, which again, doesn't legally exist or is recognized. Um, and I just pulled up the IRS website's opinion on that. And they certainly will scrutinize that. They have plenty of times, it doesn't exist. Um, so a very important thing to understand about trusts, all of the 50 states have adopted uniform trust codes and adopted statutes regulating trusts. So therefore, any trust is statutory. There's no getting around that. 
And that might sound like a bad thing, but it's actually not. Use the muscle of that, okay? It's not a bad thing. But these patriots, they, uh, the ones that participate in the mythology, they act like anything statutory is evil and bad. And so they'll stay away from statutory trust. They'll stay away from LLCs because that's statutory, which, again, we're using the muscle of the state's uh, indemnification. Same with trusts. You want to use that, that muscle. Well, I mean, that said, if you went to the state and said, well, I have a private business, well, what law is that under? Well, I mean, what does that mean? So you're private from the state. So what does that mean? You're a national business? What, what, are you another state? Because remember, it means foreign. So if I'm private, what am I private to? Well, that means I'm private to the Uniform Law Commission's, you know, passing of all these statutes on uniform law when it comes to trusts. Well, that puts you outside of even the international purview. Now, what's, what are you private? I mean, your privacy means that you're, you're basically saying, I want to, I want to benefit from, from the, from everything that my taxes would pay, but I'm protesting the tax. I want to benefit from everything that a trust might provide and the guru tells me, but I'm not going to pay the tax and I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to, no, but I'm, but I protest against the law that would give the trust any power or any recognition in the first place. Wait a minute. (laughs) What's wrong with this picture? This protest patriot movement has, as the guy said for 50 years, it's been longer than that, but he pointed to a case in 1968 where they were trying to pull this crap. So come on, guys, think about these words and what they mean before you just take them at face value because, wait, wait a minute, I'm private from the state too? Wait, <laughs> I only have the nation or the state. What else can I do? Well, I guess I could go international, but uh, hmm, gee. <laughs> Well, hold on, there's more. So, (laughs) now, the next thing, part of his process is uh, you send parties what's called a notice of interest, a double authenticated uh, Alabama Secretary of State uh, version of that. And you send these documents to Anthony Blinken, Joe Biden, Janet Yellen, uh, Director of National Shrine Trustee, um, Secretary of State, IRS, in your Christian name, by the way. Um, you get a new SSN, supposedly. You undo contracts. You send a uh, affidavit memorandum to IRS. You f- send Form IRS 15403 and Form 1040 Return Delinquency, which is a horrible idea. And then you send Form 56 Revocation. Um, and these forms are with the IRS, of course. And I, I want to pick apart these IRS forms because <laughs> this is not unique. A lot of gurus tell you. Okay, so this is the first point that I think needs to be made, which is something we've been saying over and over. There has not been one point where I have sent a letter or asked anybody in the United States government whether or not I can be private from it. There's not one point where I've sent a letter saying, hey, just, just so you know, I'm somehow a, a Christian, <laughs> and therefore I'm starting a fictional business against the Bible. No, this is not, no, 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 no. You don't ask permission to be in a private association. That's the point, right? I mean, the private association, you form it so that when government comes and says, hey, you're doing something there, we're not sure what you're doing, do you owe us taxes? And you can say, well, no, sir, we're a private membership association, kindly piss off. You're not going to them and saying, hey, here's my whole plan. Here's the fraud. Here, I'm going to write you a letter and uh, I put you on some kind of false notice. I mean, come on, guys. Again, what? how is that private? You're... <laughs> How how can the here's another question for you? Maybe you can answer this, Brandon. How are they going to even accept or answer a letter that is not written by one of their persons, including co- oh, well, corporate? Oop, you're silent. You're silent. Well, Clint, they didn't respond to my letter, so that must mean it works. Oh yeah, that's the other fallacy, right? Somehow it becomes law if they don't. Is that one of his things? Because that's a common one. 
And then if you see that, if you see that run, if, if you see anything dealing with Sesta Cuve or the Act of Twelve or the Act of seventeen ninety one or the Act of uh, whatever eighteen seventy one or the bankruptcy, because we I think we covered that the United States it, it can't go bankrupt. That's not how it works. Um, yeah, you can't declare bankruptcy as a nation state. So. Anytime you see anything like that, you you run. You instantly know they're a fraud, and they're they're just copying shit from the tax protest movement. But yeah, you cannot write a letter to someone or some agency or entity and say if you don't answer this within thirty days, it somehow be, I've just somehow made a contract and it's become lawfully enforceable. Show me. I mean, at, again, at least go verify that in the law. And if you can, send it to me so I can retract what I just said. Exactly. They don't even understand what constitutes a contract uh, or makes it binding. So anyways, um, now I want to get into the, the IRS forms that not only he, but all the gurus tell you to fill out. Now, not a single one of the gurus pushing the revocation of election uh, with the IRS ever seemed to have any evidence that the IRS accepted their revocation. And the only proof of success has been claims from people that they haven't heard from the IRS ever since they sent the IRS the ROE. But that isn't proof of anything other than how slow the IRS is on their paperwork. Well, it, it appears- well, We've also talked about how certain, the reason they send it to certain offices is because the, the workers are not allowed to say, hey, oh, this is obviously fraud, I'm gonna put it aside. They, they're they required to file what you send them. So they say, don't send it to the proper office because they'll actually challenge it. No, send it here where they know it's gonna get filed. It's gonna go into some file and it's not gonna be found for five, maybe one, but probably you know three, four, five years, maybe 10 years, when all of a sudden you get this massive tax lien on your property and they take your take your estate to pay for what you did 10 years ago that was completely fraudulent. You do that or what, go to jail or, right? So the important part, as I said, is they, they tell you to send it to a certain office because they know that that particular agent that you're sending it to has no power to challenge it. They're required to enter the paperwork without question and they don't touch it again. It's gone until someone finds it later on, right? And then, of right, course, and that- then they tell you, well, if they don't respond, you know, then it's uh, such bullshit, man. It, it is. It, and it actually appears the IRS is starting to clamp down on this revocation of election you know, for, Shit. The, for, now, for, for the, the first, first time book. in my life, I, I'm 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 kind of let go. I, I hope they do, because they they need to leave regular people alone and go after stupid people. <laughs> exactly. Some people I have been informed that did this, who sent the form fifty six revocation of election received from the IRS, was called a thirty one seventy five letter from the IRS warning them that that correspondence they sent is based on frivolous tax arguments, which the IRS has a whole page on. Just look up IRS frivolous arguments, okay? And then in this letter from the IRS, they tell you that the IRS will not respond to further correspondence making frivolous arguments and (laughs) and that uh, IRS failure to respond means that the IRS uh, aggressor accepts or acquiesces to such argument. So if you were to send a revocation of election letter for a collection due process hearing or an offer in compromise, this document could be penalized by the IRS for $5,000 as a specified frivolous submission. Okay, that's what they call it under our IRC section 6702. So the IRS sending a 3175 notice in response to a revocation of election letter in the IRS's perspective, that establishes evidence that you were warned that your Form 56 letter is, well, frivolous. And so the IRS, they're going to penalize these documents without warning or giving you a chance to withdraw the frivolous document to avoid the penalty. So just realize the can of worms you're opening if you try to mess with this stuff. I mean, the revocation... 
I Go just want to. I just want to say, look. I mean, we we can joke and we can say things. We're here. I'm not getting anything for this. You know, I'm not. <laughs> I'm 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 a poor researcher, and I like it that way, right? I don't I don't like receiving things for what I do. I actually, whether it seems like it or not, I give a shit. I care that people are being harmed by these people. I really care that shows that I've been on, like Rice, are, and I said, look, I don't even really want to talk about this, but I think it's the fruition of all my years of looking. I knew to teach privacy, I just didn't know how to get there in this in this methodology, right? And it really upsets me that that I'm like, but, but don't, you know, keep it reasonable. Keep it on the, don't go searching for gurus. Don't allow this to get out of hand uh, because I shouldn't be talking about it. This is the reason that people don't talk about it because I, it's a completely different mindset. It is something that I don't think most people can even I mean, we're so brainwashed, we're so controlled, we're so conditioned that I don't think most people can come out of the matrix enough <laughs> to actually, you know, well, for one, see the, see, you know, okay, yeah, this is an honorable thing. This is something that I'm in the United States because I can't be trusted. I'm a citizen who has the power of contract because contracts between people who don't trust each other. Right, we don't contract; we trust. Big difference. So, you're, you're. I, I just gotta say, we're not doing. I'm, I'm not getting anything from this, right? I hope Brandon gets some customers for this. But, look, you guys gotta realize, there are so many people being harmed, and you're going to be one of them. Despite what we say, despite the warnings we've given, despite the primary evidence and source that we are putting in your face, you will still go out tomorrow and look for a new guru. And I ask you, why don't you instead go to a law library, go to Yale or Har any of the libraries online, go to academia.com, go to the law books, read... Do some research instead of listening to a radio show <laughs> that promotes everything from gold and silver to, you know, just all kinds of crap. Crypto. Crypto. Right. That's not where you're going to get your information. The only reason you're getting good information from us is because we do the research. We're quoting it. These guys don't give you these. Oh, they're going to they're going to quote. uh uh, one of the things I found that was so infuriating is that people would send you a case and the case would have a quote and the quote would be completely out of context or it would be the losing opinion or it would be whatever, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with the losing opinion. It's still viable, but it doesn't necessarily apply to your case. And so just because someone says there's a citizen of the United States and there's a citizen of the state, that is so out of context to what the whole case is actually referring to that you can't use it as evidence. It's like trying to go to court and using a YouTube video. Hey, let's arrest George Bush for 9-11 because we've got evidence in YouTube that says it. No, you have to create a whole dossier. You have to send that to the FBI. You have to find an agent willing to take it on and hope that he follows it up. But you have to do all the the the, the basic research first to present that does you can't just go to a freaking mouthpiece on the radio that you know is trying to get your money and expect to get good information i'm sorry and i, I don't know why that's why you even have to say that <laughs> but i mean i like i guess it's, i i i i should know better because I, I was part of this whole truth movement radio thing and I've had to, you know, I spend half, I spend more than half of my time now just debunking it, right? And and that's, that's bothering me, it's troublesome, because that means that every, that means that everybody out there is as confused as everybody else, and is willing to accept just about anything, because it sounds hopeful, it sounds 
again, there's money at the end of the rainbow. There's you're gonna put a lien on somebody. You want revenge against the judge that wronged you, and you're gonna do all these things that are against the law. Uh, you're gonna open things that aren't recognized by law. You know, I don't know what to say, man. It's it's enough, Brandon. And I know we've talked about this before. We're like, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to just be done with it. I, I don't. I don't want to deal with people that cannot think for themselves anymore. Really, I mean. We we have to go do some damn research. Stop listening to me. Stop listening to Go do research. Go find out what a trust is before you take the plunge. Just please. <laughs> it, exactly. I'm really, I've been over the alternative movement for quite some time. I've divorced it a long time ago. And I think you guys should too. Uh, there's nothing that's, there's nothing good that's come out of it except confusion and lies and uh false gods so so anyways back to the various various rehab of the tax exactly so one last thing about the revocation of election um (laughs) this can and will be used against you later in a criminal prosecution to display your violation of their tax law, and it was intentional because they previously warned you that your position was frivolous. And if you didn't try to fix that, that's going to go against you really badly. So again, just like Clinton was saying to you guys earlier, I urge you, before you do any of this kind of crazy stuff, do your due diligence, please, before you even pay these gurus. Also, you know, that's the same as going to court and saying something ridiculous like I'm a man or uh, I'm not the person. And the judge instantly knows. You know, if you go in there and the IRS has already warned you and you proceed anyway, the judge is already going to have a massive prejudice. He's going to know that you don't know what the hell you're doing. He's going to use words that you don't, you're going to have any idea. You're going to try to you're gonna be like, I'm here to represent myself and blah, 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 blah. blah. And, and – you're going to have this massive prejudice already built up upon you because you won, you ignored a notice that said you were in fraud and, and probably in felony. And two, you're using terms that aren't even officially recognized in <laughs> legal settings or court procedure like state national or private, what? Private, 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 private business trust, which, um, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, I don't know. You're just going to have this massive prejudice against you, and and at that point you're you can't come out from under it because your ignorance has already been shown as to the way the way things really work. And you're trying to you're trying to do things that only the big boys do, only the only the organized criminals do. And I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it. Stay in honor. Stay with us. Stay, you know, do this only because you want to be a good person, a good, you know. A leader of your community because you want to co-op with other people because you want to form a private society somehow some way but or do it the right way which is to get the proper type of trust to protect your assets and that but all of this stuff that has to do with you know when it comes to protecting yourself or you know these promises that are made by these guys they're obviously not true but i think there's this we used to call it hopium Right? <laughs> There's this hopium that they're injecting into you through their through their glamour and they're you know, they're pretending to be good people and they're just not good people, man. They're they're just looking for the next scam to sell you. So I like I said, I, I it's very frustrating to be in this position, you know. It really is. Um now I wanna share a video about this business trust scam. So um now, understand, just to make sure you guys are clear, there is no such thing as a business trust. Now, I use trust uh, to hold membership in a LLC, but it doesn't mean the trust itself is a business trust. It's either going to be revocable or irrevocable. Um, there's no special like type of unique structure that I'm using. It's been used for years and years and years. We're not reinventing the wheel on trust. We don't have to. <laughs> So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And uh, mind you, this is going to be from some attorney. So I don't agree 100% with what everything they say, but you guys will see. 
So, all right, business trust organizations. I don't know where to start. Can you guys hear that, by the way? Hear it. Hear it. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. All's, all's we know is that we got a heck of a lot of people that come to us thinking they need a business trust rather than an LLC or an escort. Or they want to need a business trust rather than an IRA LLC. Most people are in California and they've got sold on one thing, $800 fee. If you use a business trust, there's no $800 fee in California. And you don't want to pay the $800 fee to the state of California. And I know there's a lot of people held back. So the $800 fee that he's talking about is when you set up an LLC in California, every year you have to pay the California Tax and Franchise Board the $800 fee just to have an LLC in California, which I recommend even if you're a California resident, do not set up an LLC in California. And a lot of smart Californias don't. They'll either set up in a, in a they'll always, if they're smart, set up in a different state. There's some intricacies on how to do that properly, but a lot of the smart people do that, and that's perfectly legitimate. So, anyways, just to address that confusion, if there was any. Uh, let's but on that $800 fee, they will do anything. They will spend $900 to save an $800 fee. Let me, just to make a couple points. I don't know any attorney that really sets up business trusts for the typical small business, for rental properties, for IRAs that stands by them. I just don't run into them. You never hear other lawyers talk about them. We don't see high, super high net worth clients, any sophisticated clients. That's the biggest thing, right? I know quite a bit of high net worth people, and let me tell you, they are not, they don't even know what a business trust is. They don't care, right? It's completely irrelevant. It's using them. The only ones we see using them or that bring it up are ones that got sold it from someone who's not an attorney sells at a holiday inn trusts for asset protection and all this they don't work i can't tell you how many issues i've had with clients that have set these up that have bought properties with them they go to sell them no one knows what the hell it is this the the, the title company's like what is this the state doesn't have business trust i know it's a delaware business trust okay but you're in california i had an arizona client with that they're like yeah we don't recognize that here they wouldn't transfer the property. The person had to unwind the whole thing, deed the property back to the person they bought the property for, have them deed it back to them into a new, into their. So just imagine doing that, using the business trust and then having to do all what he just described, having to undo it, change the title over and then try to change the title again. If you try to do that yourself, which you can do yourself, if you know what you're doing, that's going to cost, you know, a few hundred dollars at least. Plus uh, state transfer taxes, if you don't know what you're doing. And then if you're trying to do this with an attorney to correct it, well, that's going to cost you north of $1,000, right? Our personal name, actually, then they were able to sell the property. It was a total nightmare, tens of thousands in legal fees to fix. These things are clunky. Some people, what's happening is they're selling you a business trust, but they're setting up a revocable trust. And so everyone's confused on what the heck it is. So it you do not want to mix revocable trust with business. Okay. We only use the revocable trust for certain things in the safe haven system. When it comes to business, you don't want your revocable trust to be listed as the member a lot of times, right? Typically you want an irrevocable trust for that. So again, what they're pitching you, the private business trust is going to give you ass protection, privacy. I'm sorry, but with a revocable trust, there is no ass protection. However, with a irrevocable trust, there can be if it's set up properly. But even if these gurus set you up with a business trust that was irrevocable, it still wouldn't work. So. Kind of works because like the title company or the bank or something is like, Oh, this is just like a revocable living trust, like for your estate plan? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. And so somehow it's, it's working in certain instances, but it's really not, that's not what it is, right? Like it's not a Same trust thing, that right? when you die. So right there. That's my point. As long as you can get the agent to file it, 
even if you have to say, yeah, sure, it's just a regular family trust. That is the that's what they try to get. That is when you know it's a guru because he, they'll tell you to, especially to, because the whole point is to get it filed. Once it's filed, they know that by the time the powers that be catch up with the paperwork, they're going to be long gone. Your your deal with them is over. They're on to another scam, possibly even another name that they're doing business as, and you're stuck having committed a crime under the advice of a guru. I'm sorry, it's just, it, this is cla it's typical, it's classic. Like, it's been going on for 50 freaking years. <laughs> it's, I mean, you literally can't make this up. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of these guys have. I wish I had their imagination. I really did. Um, okay, so moving on. Now that we've gone through the business trust scam, which again, I'm never an advocate for, uh, we're only using traditional trusts, okay? With trust, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, now, revocable trust weren't a thing until the 1930s, okay? Trust for a long, long time before that were always irrevocable until the 1930s. So now we get to use both. And again, in the safe haven, safe haven system, depending on your situation, you might need both. You might need one or the other, depending on what you need. But there is no blanket term trust that just works for everyone or everyone's situation. I'm sorry, that's just not going to work. Everyone's situation is unique. Everyone's estate plan looks differently, right? So, okay, so... Now I took some notes from a video KL did with Rice TV. It was one out of four. I, it was so bad, I couldn't even watch the next three after getting through the first one. I mean, it was so bad, I, I can't bring myself to watch any more of it. Um, but here are some quotes that KL said on Rice TV's video. And again, this is not to dis disparage Rice personally. I've never talked to the guy. I, I hope he means well. I think he might. Um, I don't know him. I think he's looking for truth. Ho hopefully that's his goal, right? I know you've been on his show, so we're not trying to disparage him. Um, after a while, after you, a while you, you, start, you start accepting anything that sounds good as, as the truth. And that's unfortunate, but it happens to most people out there. And you either keep doing it or you kind of like me, where you just say, okay, I'm, I'm, I can't do this anymore. I, there's no, all this stuff is, all this stuff coming at me in the Patriot movement is a lie. Um, it's, it's probably more of a lie than I hear on the mainstream. At least the mainstream, I can, I can at least, you know, easily verify whether it's true or not. But this stuff, it's not because it's, it's esoteric. It's, uh, you know, a lot of stuff I talk about is esoteric. It's because you, you know, it's not like I can say, look, there's the straw man. No, you have to understand that when you play the game of Monopoly, that you have to inhabit this piece, this game player, that you can't play the game as yourself. You have to do it as something else. The question is, is that something else public or private? Exactly. Very well said. So here are some quotes Kale made on that episode I was watching. Uh, first one, quote, titles means there is a trust agreement going on, end quote. <laughs> I mean, I, that's so ridiculous. I mean, I shouldn't even have to explain that to you guys. Again, not everything is a trust, nor it should be. Uh, is, he referring to, is he referring to property title? Property title? Everything. A anything title in your name, that means it's a trust. Your bank account, your car, like all of that. That's what he's saying. Whenever there's a title, this is his quote, titles means there is a trust agreement going on. Well, hold on. First of all, show me the trust instrument that is conveying that trust agreement for all of these different moving parts in our lives. And of course, he's not going to be able to pull that up, right? Now, another quote, quote, money is a trust, end quote. Um, money is definitely not a trust. So, Coin, I know you've talked about uh, how 
on the dollar itself, it says for public and private, right? Yeah, yeah, but I'm also like just going on this. I'm thinking, okay, my just just my bank account for this. My bank account is a trust. Anything that has a title, which yes, that would be a qualifier. Have you ever? Have you ever? So let me let me just let me just ask you this here, because <laughs> this might solve the, the equation here. Can I get insurance on my trust? Um, can I get insurance that, I get that, insurance that, that, the, that the trust store will do? Will do, do, will do. I, there, there is some things you can get insurance for in a trust, but it's it's I not... Think, I don't think, I don't really think that, not, not for the not for the experience of being in a trust you could form an insurance trust they call it an li liit an insurance trust which is an irrevocable trust set up with a life insurance policy as the asset allowing the grantor of the policy to exempt assets away from their taxable estate but i mean and that's a trust that is basically the insurance i mean it, but you don't really get insurance on the notion of a trust now you have consumer protections you have insurance but yeah the to say that that when i go to a store and i give the clerk money and he gives me a he i purchase meaning take over the 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 the, the asset that that in question we've made an exchange right that is not a tr that's not a trust in any way it's actually sort of the opposite of a trust because in a, in a trust i'm not doing a transaction right now that that transaction can have insurance attached to it it but it's not a trust there's no trust going on that's why we have all these consumer protections and all these fraud uh, agencies and why the IRS is putting out all these fraud alerts these things aren't trust like like, like again why would I what, if it's trust then I don't I, I've gone beyond the need for an insurance policy to guarantee the trust something about that just doesn't stand in any way that makes sense because you're you're not in that system of insurance anymore, and if if you are, it's because you put the policy itself, which is worth money, into a trust. <laughs> but you're not, you don't insure. Like I, I I don't know what to say. Like I can't. Uh, I'll put it to you this way. This goes back to the the honor and the trust thing. You, the legal law cannot enforce good behavior. It can only punish for bad behavior. It can only require bad behavior. That's what it does. It can require that a contract be fulfilled, but it cannot require good behavior. It can't make you. That's what the moral law is. That's what the law of God is. That's that's not something that is the purview of the legal system, and that's actually a maxim of law, right? And so these two things are, at least what we're talking about, are on a completely different level of consciousness, let alone of law. Right, most of this law doesn't apply to it. It's not in the public purview, and if it is, you've done something either mistakenly, or uh, you know you purposely created a public, tr a, a public trust. I mean, so this whole thing is, is bothering me. Yeah, and to touch on the insurance thing, yes, there is a type of trust you can use for that, but. Most of us, you don't even need that. You can actually make the beneficiary of your life insurance, not your heirs. You can change that out to your trust, revocable or irrevocable, either one, whatever one you want to use. Now, typically, depending on your situation, I'm going to recommend one or the other. But again, these things are very individualized and idiosyncratic. So now I want to go back to his quote. Titles means there is a trust agreement going on. Well, that's a complete... I don't even know where you get that from because most people holding title to their car, right? 
they're holding that under their straw man, right? So how is that a trust? Now, what you can do is switch the title from the straw man over to a trust. That would be a better application, but he doesn't even say that. In fact, he doesn't even tell his people to do that. So he's completely misunderstanding the use of trusts and how to use them properly. Yeah, and if you think, yeah, and if you think, if you really think about, you know, it would actually make sense to, uh, okay, so I've got a life insurance policy. It's worth uh, however much. Um, that is putting that insurance policy into the trust makes a lot of sense. It's a, it's an asset, right? It has a value and you're putting it into the trust so you can manage it the way you're, you're for your beneficiaries when they receive their inheritance. That way there's no question of, of who's going to get it, where it goes. It's, it's in the trust, right? Whereas as otherwise it's you know, probate and all that shit. But I mean, it actually just makes sense, but to, to, to reverse that and say that I'm going to get insurance on the trust, yeah, you're right. He's, he's, he's misleading people. Yeah, and then you made the analogy. Now, we did a video back on the common law trusts uh, probably like, what, two months ago. And we were quoting a guru that used that gas station example. Oh, me getting gas, um, you know, the, <laughs> the gas station cashier is the grand tour. I'm the trustee getting the gas. And the beneficiary, it's complete, I mean, I don't even know how to, I mean, it's so bad. You don't even understand how trust actually work. And to apply that to commerce, it's just absolutely ridiculous. You can't, the only way to buy gas as a trust is to use a trust debit card to pay for the gas. <laughs> but again, the transaction itself is not a trust. Right, right. So, so this guy, this guy puts it pretty good. He says, trusts are a, what is it? What is a trust? The trusts are a straightforward legal arrangement, right? None of this, none of this magic guru stuff. It's real simple. And that's why, you know, from the day I met Brandon, I started asking him what I now realize were stupid Patriot mythology questions, right? He's like, dude, just keep it simple. <laughs> that's, that's, that's half his answer is like, Hey, it doesn't have to be that complicated. Just, just think about just focus on the, the each chessboard player has a specific set of rules. What the knight can move up and and he can move diagonally in the queen. Right? Just focus on that. Don't don't make your own pieces. Don't create your own rules and your own because those rules apply on someone else's board, not the one that you're playing on. So let's let's just go back. What is a trust? Straightforward a legal arrangement that lets you leave assets to friends, relatives, or whoever you pick to be your beneficiary. The trust is managed by one or more trustees, family members, friends, or a legal professional. I will probably ultimately, who knows, I'll probably have Brandon handle my my trust that deals with all this, all my work and stuff. Because he knows what I want. He, he knows I want to preserve my stuff. Um, until the trust pays out to your beneficiaries, which can either happen upon your death or on a specified date, which is when a child turns 18. Thus, you have trust babies who are wealthy beyond imagination but can't access the trust. You see it in movies all the time. Right? You don't have to actually die for your trust to pay off. Now, here's the confusion, and this might answer the question at hand. Your life insurance policy can be put into a trust, which is often referred to as writing life insurance in trust. One of the main benefits of this approach is that the value of your policy is generally not considered part of your estate. So I could see where someone could take the, the legal term, which is a common term, writing life insurance in trust. Well, okay, I've, I've just now rearranged those words in my head to, to think that I'm not, you know, that I'm insuring the trust, right? It's, it's completely different. You're putting an asset in the trust. That's it. That's all you're doing. And then you're managing that 
to your uh, to to make sure it goes to the beneficiaries how you want it to go to at the time it, it you want it to go to. But what he's talking about, I think, is a is a misappropriation of the concept of writing life insurance in trust. Am I too far off here? Well, KL doesn't mention insurance when it comes to trusts, um, but I'm sure he would misconstrue it. And um, but it's important to cover because people often forget to put their life insurance in a trust, which is often one piece they forget to do in their estate plan, and then the estate plan fails, and that part goes to probate because they failed to forget to put in some of their financial accounts, like a life insurance policy, stuff like that. Things like that, anything titled to your name you want to put in a trust to avoid probate. If you don't, whatever's entitled to your name, not the trust, is going to go to probate. So you want to avoid that, obviously. Um, so I do give you guys a list if you do work with me, you know, everything that you got to cross off in order to properly fund your trust is what it's called. And that just means I titled everything over to the trust. I didn't have any loose ends, right? So, and again, uh, like Clint was touching on earlier, our whole point is to blend in, not stick out, Okay. You don't want you don't want your your trust or those who you are considering the beneficiaries to be put into a public situation. You want the smoothest transition from you being either alive or you know whatever your whatever whatever the. <laughs> Death is a relative legal term. It means end of contract or end of time period, right? So if I say I'm going to leave everything, but not till he's 18, well, okay. I want that to be a very smooth transition where no public uh, is even, you don't even have to notify, right? I mean, you need the death certificates, whatever, but you're not even, again, it, it really boils down to you're not asking permission. It's all in a trust. The trust is not, what gives you that that power the trust is what you show as evidence of your power to trust and uh, privately associate with your family your friends and everything but you see persons of the united states don't have inherent rights don't have blood and therefore you have to have a will or you have to do something like this so i mean your your goal as brandon just said is to remain off the radar out of court, out of probate, and have a smooth transition because you've written a legitimate, non-sham, <laughs> non-tax protest trust. And you're standing in honor, and everything you're transferring is an honorable transfer. You didn't kill yourself to get life insurance, whatever. You know, it, it's all... it's. Why Why would you want to cause controversy? Why would you want to do these things that these guys are telling you to do? And why, for God's sake, would you want to waste years of your life in paperwork battles with government? You don't, you don't, there is, you're, you're not even filing hardly anything with government, let alone sending letters to the president by name as if the, you know... <laughs> I'm going to send a letter to Joe Biden. Right? But, right? Joe, but Biden. Joe Biden is Joe Biden. He's not president. He's Joe Biden. Why would I send a letter to Joe Biden? I would send it, you know, I don't know. I just, I'm sorry. It just, I, 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 again, I'm, I'm beclimped. I'm like completely flabbergasted that this has done exactly what I, I, I predicted it would. You start talking about private associations, you start talking about this stuff, everybody goes nuts, and now you, that's the new tax protest movement, or I should say patriot mythology or whatever, alternative false redemption movement, whatever whatever we're going to call it. I, I should have known. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm the first to talk about it. I'm just saying, all right, uh, you know, I shouldn't have brought it up. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't be been talking to it I, because it, it's irresponsible to talk about things unless you're going to offer all the information. And that's exactly what these gurus do. They are 
purposefully irresponsible and scamming you because they don't offer all the information. So, yeah, I mean, again, this goes back to why private people remain private. Because, <laughs> I mean, the, the public idiocracy. I, I'm sorry. It's, it, what, what else can I say? Yeah, and an individual that worked with KL uh, that I'm working with now, I asked them, did you have an estate plan set up with this supposed trust? And of course not. There was no mention of that. Everything was still titled in their name. There was no estate plan. So what's the in point? The the, in the name of the... So, yeah, exactly. It was the name of the straw man. So now you mentioned earlier that trust uh, distribution can be distributed when the heir is 18 years old. That is possible, but I tend to caution away from having it like that because just imagine when you're 18 and you get a windfall of let's say 20 up to 100 or more grand what are you going to do that you're going to blow it your friends are going to see if you tell them maybe they'll find out for some reason and they're going to convince you to take on a trip with all of them and spend money on drugs and so you, you can set up with the trust and this is only possible with the trust contingencies okay when i pass distribution happens my trustee, whoever that's going to be, is going to be the guardian of that money for my 18-year-old. And you know what? I can, I can customize it all sorts of different ways. I can have it so that the 18-year-old has to go to the trustee, ask for the money, and the trustee has to approve for the reason. It has to be a valid enough reason. I can set it up so that they only get maybe $100 a month or $500 a month. There's all sorts of ways. Or the bills are bills. Bills are paid. Yeah, and then you exactly. I can have it set so they get a certain amount at age 20, and then another disbursement at age 25, and then another disbursement at 30. I mean, there's all sorts of ways you can customize it. You can even customize it so that they have to pass a drug test in order to get the dis. I mean, there's all sorts of amazing things you can do with the trust. It's just, again, none of these trust gurus know about this or teach it. So, you know, unfortunately, it's uh, it's just reckless and. Uh, and this is even. But, but, but that's also why they sell this as, as the guy said in the video. He said, you know, they're you go to a Holiday Inn and seeing some, some a hole sell you a product. Um, but it's also why they say, well, you know, they're selling this not as a service, but more as a package and then releasing themselves from any responsibility of what you do after you've, you know, messed with them. And, and, and you're, it's, it's really, it's really you doing the crime under their false advice. And so it, I don't know, you know, it's, it should be, again, it should be obvious that these guys are, if they're selling you a, a paperwork, essentially, then that paperwork was sold to them. And before them, it was sold to someone else under a different name and perhaps a few different parents. And you can date it back 50, 60, 70 years to the beginning of the tax process. I mean, it's, you're, 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 you're buying paperwork that's existed for generations that has always been fraudulent. And if that's what they're selling you, say, please say no. <laughs> that's not <laughs> – you're, you're going to fail. For two reasons. One, what we're discussing, but two, because you don't, you're going into this blind. You don't know anything about trust. You don't know, any, you got to admit that to yourself. I had to admit it. And I'm still, I'm still trying to catch up. You know, I'm still, when I'm not debunking all these a holes, I'm, I'm, I get a little chance to do some research, you know? <laughs> yeah. So um, that's the thing. You know, they always give you templates, right? Just like Clint said, so you fill it out, do the crime. I don't know how many times I got to say it. There, there should be, there shouldn't be a template for anything when it comes to these matters. Again, everything should be tailored to your individual situation by somebody that knows what they're doing and has successfully proven that yes, my trusts work. <laughs> um, which none of these guys can, of course. Um, and another thing is, too, I mean, um, you know, 
you gotta you gotta understand you know this th these guys like clint said they haven't reinvented anything they're just repeating the tax protester templates and essentially what is that going to do again like i was just saying the story from my client they didn't have an estate plan, even though that's what a trust is supposed to be for. So you're not even, not only do you have a sham trust, but you're not even knowing how to use a trust. And another thing too is with this KL guy, you're blinded to the all the things that he tells you to do after you sign up, right? Then you find out. Well, I think you should be fully transparent and know what you're going to get into before you sign up. That's why I'm so adamant, especially now, as of late, of displaying hey this is what i this is what i give you guys this is what i offer this is what it looks like here's a diagram of all the different moving parts there is no surprises so that's a red flag if you're in the dark of the process and you don't see how everything's going to fit together um i'm sorry that you, that's a red flag you're <laughs> in a cult or in a scam or both now another quote from kl quote the Fed devalues the dollar. It's not real money anymore after 1933, end quote. <laughs> I mean, how many times, Clint, do we have to debunk the whole 1933 thing? Well, money isn't real, period. <laughs> I mean, it's like there is no... Money doesn't grow on trees. Money is no money is obviously a creation of whoever creates it, right? So, it, it, to say it's not real, or to say that just because it's uh, de facto, or because it's uh, what fiat, or it's not backed by gold, which is untrue, that is so many, so many things you're gonna hear. Um, money is just. I'll put it to you this way: if you really want to understand the wealthy. There's a point where your wealth is so vast that money doesn't even have meaning anymore, right? Money is just a medium of exchange, and you don't even think about, <laughs> you know, it's not like it's, not like it's not like us where you have to worry, oh, do I have enough money in the bank to cover this? <laughs> no, yeah, I have a trillion dollars, and that'll cover a, a new Porsche, right? It, it's they pay in cash, they do it privately. It, it, Money is used to control you. Money is not what they value. What they do with money, what government does with money, is to invest. That's why when you look at the audits of government, they own all corporations. They own real estate funds. They own real estate. They own currencies from all over the world. They're hedged in everything. They, they don't want the money. If they just wanted money, then the money would be sitting there. But it's not. It's sitting in what? Investment funds. There is no money just sitting around in government. It's all invested, right? You you shouldn't, I mean, technically, you should follow that example, right? If you're going to play in the money system, you really shouldn't have money sitting around. You should invest it. Now, okay, well, again, the, you debate that all day long. The point though is it, it's it's a system of control and nothing else whether they value it or devalue it or alter it or turn it digital is just another way to tighten the control that it represents it's not it's real right and as far as the yeah okay the, the gold standard and the it's never, it's still collateralized. You can look up the audit of government and see that it's still collateralized by a certain million pounds of troy ounces, certain hundred million troy ounces, and it's worth this much market and this much at the statutory price. And it's all that information out there. And you know what? It doesn't mean jack crap to you. It's not for you. It's just like most of the stuff. It's just not for you. It's used to control you. It's used to keep you from ever doing anything great and brilliant. Yeah. That's all it and uh, again, he sa uh, KL said the Fed devalues the dollar. And a lot of people complain, oh, inflation, blah, blah, blah. Look, if you don't invest your money, and that doesn't mean buy gold and silver, okay? If, if you follow my work, you'll see if you hold gold and silver, it doesn't keep up with inflation compared to other assets. 
<laughs> now, yeah, and you know what? I was gonna, I was, yeah, and you know what? I was gonna, I was gonna go sell my silver the other day. So I bring it in. And was like, you know, I think I'm just gonna get rid of this because it's, you know, I'm, I, I bought this a long time ago when I actually believed that I, by buying a few silver trinkets, I was gonna become rich one day. I made someone else rich. I'll tell you that. But uh, uh, so I'm like, yeah, you know, I looked at the prices already. So he's like, okay, I, you know. I'll give you, you know, five dollars less than spot price or whatever, and and I'm like, those are, that's like an 1889 Morgan, and you're gonna give me what twenty dollars? Did you say? I could go to YouTube and I, well, the the reality is, these brokers, <laughs> the the price is being fixed at the London fixing. We've talked about that. Go look at London Fixing. Pull it up on Wikipedia. You can read all about it, right? Rothschild Bank, and 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 you know, holding that silver for me, it gets me not. It's gonna get me absolutely nothing. If, in fact, the silver or your gold suddenly goes up to. Ten thousand, twenty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars an ounce, as they've been promising since the tax protest movement started, since Alex Jones came around with GCN and their gold hold silver holdings, right? If it does go up, what do you think that means happened to the dollar? It's not going to go up because suddenly there's some hidden value or because there's a shortage. It's because the dollar is crashed. That means my toaster is worth a million dollars. Why what do I care about a gold coin if everything I have is worth now millions of dollars because, hey, I might as well burn the money because it's worthless. If you can get that much money for a piece of gold, it means that not only is your gold worthless, it means that your gold is worth exactly the amount of the worthless currency because it's been – right. so quit, quit dreaming of this – you know, this, again, false redemption. I'm going to redeem something shiny and it's going to save me. No, it's not. That's why I call it the false redemption movement because everything about it is a promise of redemption. Oh, yeah. Do uh, you still hold your dinars? Right? Do you see do you, the Galactic Federation going to come back and demand that the dinar- Come on, man. Re- the redemption process the legal equivalent of redemption should not be mixed up with the spiritual notion of redemption. Okay, they're two different things. Here you follow the law of God and you're redeemed. Here, what? Silver and gold? <laughs> That's going to redeem you? No. Come on, guys. Think about these things, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. If <laughs> See, that's the thing. These people complaining about the devaluation from the Fed. Well, if you come from that perspective, um, that's a major flaw uh, in yourself. Because if you don't invest, kind of like Clinton was talking about, how look how the, the states are investing, uh, the pension funds. Look at what they're doing. If you don't invest, you're going to be a victim of the devaluation, no matter what. So do something about it if you're so concerned about it. Can you pull up a browser real quick and, and show it to everybody? Because what pisses me off is, look, I can talk about it. I can tell you, look, there is an audit of the Federal Reserve. It's required by law. It always has been. Ron Paul is completely full of shit. And so is the end the Fed movement. And so is the audit the Fed movement. This is the only audit you're ever going to get. It's the one that's always been required of every government agency. So if you pull up a browser right now, and you type in Federal Reserve, CAFR, or audit, or anything like it, you're going to get a page from the Federal Reserve that has the CAFR, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, for the last five, ten years. And you, if you want to know something about the Federal Reserve, why don't you read the damn audit? I recognize that, I recommend the 2009 one. It had a lot of information in it. Go and Oh, look, financial reports, same same thing, audited financial reports. You want to learn about the Federal Reserve, and you actually want to learn something that's not from the false redemption movement, not from the audit the Fed, not from run. 
Okay, you want to learn the reality of things. Read the damn audit. That's what I did for the first, I don't know, seven years that I was doing this. That's why I came out ahead so much, because I understood how everything worked, because I was reading the actual audit of every government I came across. I'd go to my library, and I'd say, hey, can I see the budget report and the CAFR? And they'd look at me like, really? No one's ever asked for that before. And like they've asked for the budget, but no one's ever asked for the CAFR. They dust it off and they give me both. The CAFR's this thick, the budget's this thick. That's because they don't include the audit in the budget, because the budget's year to year, the audit is lifetime. All their investments, everything else, everything you want, everything that they tell you that the Federal Reserve is private about or doesn't tell you about is in the audit. It has to be. It's the audit. Like, I don't know what to tell you. When James Corbett made his foolish documentary about the, about the Fed, I wrote a whole argue, uh, article about it saying, here's the CAFR. Here's everything you said is not available to the public right here. Here's the public audit. It's right here. So if you want to know about the Federal Reserve and what it does, download it. Type in Federal Reserve Audit or CAFR, and it's going to come up right there, and you can learn the truth. You can also, for God's sake, go read the Federal Reserve Act. It's going to disprove most of the fallacies that you hear in the truth movement. It's, it's going to show you the very foundation of the lies, and you can go to the facts section of the Federal Reserve where it says, uh, no, we're not private. <laughs> no, we don't do that. No, we don't do anything Alex Jones says. No, <laughs> no. here's the audit. Here's the law that says we're required. To, I don't know. I, 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 you know, years, years I tried to teach people how to read these things. You know, the accounting language, I, I, I eventually just gave up. I said, you know what? Even though this is the most important thing that you could possibly have at your disposal, the audit of every government, all 200 and what, however many thousand governments there are, districts, school districts, everything, made documentaries, four documentaries about it. Nobody ever really did anything. Walter Burian, same thing. I mean, he went through his whole life trying to explain this, and nobody, nobody ever took hold of it. Why? Because it's not, you don't see Ron Paul talking about it. <laughs> Because Ron Paul says there is no audit. We need to audit the Fed. Uh, and then he mentions the audit in his bill, which is amazing. So, look, I, I mean, I don't know what to say. It, the movement itself that I was a part of, I now disavow myself from. I started doing that when I was on the radio. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want, I went to a conference. I don't want these people's names next to mine because I'm giving them legitimacy because <laughs> I'm the one that's actually quoting the truth, right? And I'm I'm just I, I I again I'm 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 allowing my frustration to come through here, but I know you feel the same way. And like I said, uh, the whole point here is just do, do do some due diligence, folks. You're gonna come to us. And you're gonna keep presenting. Hey, what about the the World Private Freedom Foundation? Are they good? Oh, what about the We Are Trust People Foundation? Right? No, they're no. Just because they formed a, a, a corporation, soul does not make them no. Just because they're a 508 or they claim to be no. Just because, I mean, how long can we do this before you just pick up the damn source and read it yourself? It, you exactly. Um, and, and back to gold. Just realize every gold-backed currency has failed. Not one has lasted. And the most recent example of a gold-backed currency failing is the 1930s depression. There is not enough liquid gold to value dollars with in the kind of economy that we have, especially today. So just a little side note about that. Now, Clint and I um, have talked about that in depth. I have a video. It's called Why I Sold All My Precious Metals. Um, I encourage you guys to watch that if you really think your gold and silver is worth what you think it is. Um, so anyways, moving on from that. Now, this is another thing that KL says. He says that grantor uh, of trust is the executor. Well, that is incorrect. 
Executor is a term for wills, okay? A completely different legal instrument. If you have a trust, it's a completely different thing, right? If anything, the trustee is the executor, right? Not the grantor. So again, this is displaying. He does not understand how trusts work. Another quote, uh, quote, Roman civil law is the same as statutory, end quote. <laughs> I mean, dude, how does that even make sense? Now, another thing he says is that court is a trust. We've gone over that. He does. He's another one of those people. Here's another quote. Quote, two government or yeah, two governments in the U.S. The Republic, which is a public trust agreement and the democracy is a public corporate trust, which again, there's no such thing as a public corporate trust or a republic public trust. There is no such thing. Clint, you want to elaborate that? I know you've talked in depth about republics, how it's nothing special. <laughs> well, every country in the world is essentially a republic. From China to Russia to Bangladesh to, like I said, it was, it, it, in my opinion, just from my recent research, and there's a video I'm trying to get done, um, which really, I'm kind of calling it the ultimate history of the world, because it's like, since the Treaty of Westphalia, how everything was taken over by first convincing people they could be self-governing in a republic, and then immediately, there's a constitution. And it's funny because right now I was just pulling up this 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 article that said that the U.S. Constitution was is the was the first written constitution in the world. And I'm like, that's certainly not true. What about the Code of Hammurabi? What about going back to you know the, the last the thousands of years? There's been over 800 uh, constitutions every country, right? And I, for some reason, there's this American exceptionalism, like our constitution is special and we worship it. It gives us rights. No, it doesn't. Uh, you know, it's just, and and it, it, it's, it's a shame because when you actually look at this history, you understand the nation state model, basic political science. You look, every country is listed as a republic, but every nation state is listed as a sovereign state while all the republics, which were the states, are no, not recognized as states. There are, there's no republics left in any functionality that has to do with the international model, right? That was taken over. When the United States manifested itself in the Civil War as an entity in and of itself, and it defeated all of the southern states because it said the southern states were trying to cede the territories of the United States, keeping in mind that all states are first territories of the United States, right? <laughs> when they form a state or a republic, uh, you know, the Republic of Texas, well, last thing government said about Texas is if you get out of line again, we're just going to come down here and beat, sh beat the crap out of you again. I mean, it's horrible to read what the last words to some of these out outlying, you know, southern southern states were, Basically, you know, we're the United States. We are now your master. You are our subject. You are not sovereign. We we take your lands. We, you know, all your public lands are ceded to us, except in Texas. Uh, it's amazing to read the reality of it. And so every country in the world is basically a republic, commonwealth, whether it's a dictatorship, a monarch, you know, a constitutional republic. It doesn't matter. It, it, they're all republics. And so for us to worship the idea that somehow we're this, we're like the only constitution and the only republic. And, but I mean, it, 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 it's, 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 it's how the whole world was taken over, including us. The George Washington, uh, no, Thomas Jefferson, excuse me, in a letter to someone, I can't remember, it'll be in my video. I mean, it's very, very clear. He said, look, this is nothing original about the declaration of the constitution. Nothing, nothing at all about the Declaration of Independence that was special or was not the the ongoing thought at the time, and that had to do with the revolutions and the you know you had France you had France you had the French Revolution all these revolutions going on, but that was the royal families establishing and nation building these new nation states. 
that's all the Constitution was. It was designed to put over a failed republic, and as it is everywhere in every country, and to take it over in the nation state model internationally, make it internationally recognized, which we weren't, and or to perfect and the debt, and then take take it over. Every every country out there is conquered by its nation state, by its uh, constituted authority. It's all the same, and not, there is no exception, but a very, very, very few of the Arab countries, maybe some down in Africa, you know, completely insignificant when it comes to the international state of things. So, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell people. When you find out and you understand that states are no longer and haven't been sovereign for a very long time, that England, Ireland, Scotland are no longer considered sovereign nations or states, that only the United Kingdom and only the United States, Washington, you know, the nation states, the, what I used to call the corporation nation, uh, which you could still say, um, I mean, that's all it is. It's very different than what we're taught. And I'll tell you what, you want to really get a trip, go to Encyclopedia Britannica and type in nation state. Man, it's like it's like reading the blueprint of how we were destroyed. Like, how do you destroy a nation? Well, through the nation state. First, you build the people. You build the identity. You build the the spiritual union between people or between states, which just means people. And then, like now, right, you build this fake nationality towards the nation state, your captor, Stockholm syndrome. You worship the flag of, the, of your captor. And then now that it's time to get rid of the nation state model and go global, right? Now you're going to create the United States of the world, basically, which are nation states, not states. Now you're going to have global government by nation state, where the nation states are states of that union. And you've got globalism, basically. And everything's already uniform. All the laws have been uniform Uniform Law Commission, Unidroid. All these different things. Every country, you, you, no matter where you go, you can say I'm in I'm in England, but I'm going to use the law of uh, Beirut as my <laughs> as my law, or I'm going to use the international codes, or I'm going to do that. End user agreements, all the things that we do, we don't realize we're we're taking ourselves out of our own country and its own system and putting ourselves into the international purview. So I mean, I that's some of the that's part of the reason that I'm I'm real weary about a lot of these guys that say use UCC because like I said UCC is for it's a uniform law that's been applied to the world and corporations then use use the UCC one and all those things to ensure that they can put a lien uh, to ensure the contracts fulfilled and uh, also to you know if there's a hardship of some sort. They can go to the Unidroid or they can go to – they agree on a law, a system of law that's not their own. Well, that's what you're doing. You're taking yourself out of any legitimate system and putting yourself into arbitration where there's no judge, no jury. There's just one uh, hired guy that probably whoever you're contracting with will decide who it is. And in the case of Apple or Microsoft or whatever – they specifically tell you, yeah, you're, you're, you, you have no access to your own legal system. We choose the arbiter. You agree to it if you want to use our product. I mean, that's the system we've got. So whatever the republic was, short-lived as it was in any place, it, 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 to worship it or to think that it, it had any relevance other than to trick people into accepting these constitutions, Masonic constitutions to form the nation state model to globalize since uh, about 1648 when the Treaty of Westphalia was, was created. I mean, the, the history is so far removed from what we're taught. And yet the Encyclopedia Britannica says, you know, the nation, the typical nation state will indoctrinate its people with the national mythology, right, with the patriot mythology. And what I see is everybody that's in this truth movement or anybody that's still patriotic doesn't realize they've been conquered, doesn't realize that all the states are not sovereign, men aren't sovereign, only these these entities are, and that 
all of the patriotic stuff that they should be applying to their people, their spiritual union of people or nation, is being applied to the the, the intruder, the the uh, interloper that is the nation state, the corporation that's a global uh, institution, and not even you know not even the same system of law. We still think we we think we're under the Constitution because it has nothing to do with us because we're in the United States, we're in the international body as a conquered people. I, again, I, I the republic concept is great on paper, but as a realistic thing, its design, in my opinion, after all this research, was simply just to create to weaken a people. Because as we're discussing, most people are not able to be self-governing. I've read plenty of quotes in the past from prominent men who were private that said most men don't want to be private. You take a prisoner out of jail, he's very uncomfortable in society, he wants to go back to jail. Because he's comfortable there, He's you know, everything's done for him, he, they feed him. Uh, he can't handle being free. Well, use the matrix, right? If you're, if you're, if you've lived your whole life in the simulation, in the legal simulation, you've never had self-responsibility in any true sense. Everything is causality. Everything, the choices are made for you. You go vote for one of two evils, and that's your president, no matter what you vote. Well, okay, so you've never had freedom. You've never, you've never been in a situation where you're self-governing or where you're in a trust situation that you can have people governing you that you know that you know they're statesmen that are that are people oriented but we don't have statesmen because the states aren't you know there's just the united states these guys are employees uh, as congressmen they're employees of the the nation state and and sort of playing this double part as the de jure uh you know duly elected people of the state but they're not statesmen they don't they don't give a crap about the state so anyway, it's, it's, again, it's just part of the mythology, man. And I, you know, more than anything at this point in my life, I don't believe in history in any way, shape or form anymore. There, there, I, I'm, you're not going to convince me, first of all, that because a group of men did something and they called it the revolutionary war, that therefore I'm bound and in fealty to their family who have been the presidents ever since. No, I do not agree with that. I do not agree that that my freedom and my liberty are franchises of an institution. No, I don't agree with that, okay? No, I can govern myself. But what I don't want to do is form a republic as an a, 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 a legal entity that can then be, of course, taken over. No, this is why we're promoting privacy. This is why we're promoting the association of private people who, who are very discriminatory and very, no, you can't be part of our group. You are not like-minded. <laughs> You're, I mean, for God's sake, that is what it, that, that's what the country was supposed to be. But now you've got every religion, every law, every possible way of think, thinking. You don't have a people. See, that's the problem, man. We're not a people. We're not a spiritually minded or like-minded people. We have nothing in common anymore. We hate each other. We talk shit about each other. We have your memes and our... We're not a people. So to even say we the people, do you know who else said we the people? Every freaking country out there. We the people of Bangladesh. We the people of Thailand. We the people of Russia. We the people. They all start the same way. But for some reason, we're, we're the one country that actually thinks we're a free people. And I don't get it. I just, how did I ever think that when... I'm forced to go to a public school when I'm forced to do this and I'm forced to do that and I'm forced to accept who they put up as a leader and they call it democracy. I, how did I ever think I was free? Um, I can say that now that I've learned that I'm not. Yeah, so like you touched on, every constitution is Masonic in nature. Um, 
If you want to learn more about that, Clint and I did a video called Private Associations Run the World. We go through how the model of a constitution is exactly from the Masons. Every Masonic uh, lodge of each state has their own constitution. So anyways, now another thing that KL says, he says the federal government is an HOA. <laughs> if you don't know if an HOA stands for, it's an acronym for Homeowners Association, which there is some truth in that, but it's not the end all be all. Um, again, I mean, it's just, he's going off of these weird talking points. And then uh, here's another quote from him. You have the power to amend a contract with an HOA, end quote. Well, that's definitely problematic. He doesn't understand that HOA is a lien holder. And when you move into that address, it is a voluntary agreement that you enter into. You cannot set your own term as to think that the HOA is going to care or is that it's legally binding that you try to amend the contract with the HOA. Again, <laughs> a trust, a lot of people say a trust is a contract. It's not. A trust is not a contract, contrary to many gurus saying that it is. Beneficiaries do not agree or sign off on being a beneficiary in a trust, right? So KL, he says that trust law as if it's its own area of law, and that's also incorrect. Trust law is not a category of law. Your trust provisions that are in the trust instrument is the trust law in of itself, right? That's, that's a hard, that's, that's a hard, that's a hard one to get around that you're actually, <laughs> that you're actually making your own, it's not that you're making your own law, it's that you're utilizing what's available to you so that you're not bound to um, another another uh, system of or another you know it's, it's it's hard to put into words but yeah you're <laughs> to say that it's oh, no God, I I, I totally get it because I just hear trust law trust law over and over like it's some unique you know underground off grid area of law and I'm sorry there is no such thing as that as a category in law again. Uh, like I was saying, it is just the provisions. When you use when you use a porta potty, and you see that there's toilet paper in the porta potty, that is, is a trust. Is my ass the beneficiary then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's really what these people are saying, though. Like in a nutshell. All right, so, so moving on, we got, we got a lot more to work through. So again, KL says uh, the republic is a public trust agreement, and then the democracy is a public corporate trust. Well, here's the thing. There is no such thing as a public trust. Trusts are not public record, nor are they registered or filed anywhere. So how... You can say that. You can say that. You can say that. That colloquially, you could you could say it without the actual meaning of of a trust, right? I mean, yeah, I could see where you could say that, but it, 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 as far as a legal terminology, that is an incorrect statement. Yeah, exactly. So here's the thing: uh, how can KL be so sure of all these public trusts if he can't produce the actual trust documents? And the answer is he can't. <laughs> now, another thing he says, quote, creator of trust controls, end quote. There is some truth in it, and that's how these gurus get you. They sprinkle in some half-truths. Here's the thing. Only in the drafting of the trust law itself does the creator control the trust. After that, though, in most cases, the grantor gives up control. That is the whole point of an irrevocable trust. That's what the quote means, own nothing, control everything, right? If the grantor is still controlled, which is basically playing the role of trustee, using trustee powers, in most cases, in most states, that's going to be considered a sham irrevocable trust. Only in a revocable living trust can the grantor be trustee as well, hence giving control. But again, 
that can be a downside if you're trying to use a revocable trust for asset protection. Because then the creditor is just going to say, well, okay, well, the trust or the trustee is the grantor, so he's still controlling it. Is he? It's it's still his property technically. So again, I mean, there there's so many caveats when it comes to this, and unfortunately, these idiots they don't they speak out of their ass. So okay, so. Now, here are some notes that I took exactly from KL's notes that was on Rice TV's episode. Uh, this, year 1213, treaty slash trust agreement between King John and the Vatican. King John agreed that England and Ireland would be fiefs of Rome and the English crown would be forfeited to Rome. Then he goes on to tell the story. Thereafter, all lands explored including America, and claimed on behalf of the British monarchs is a vassal of Rome. The Holy See, and he spells S-E-E, not S-E-A, uh, retained the global jurisdiction of the air, quote, spirit, granted jurisdiction of the land to the monarchs, and the sea jurisdiction admiralty to British crown temple bar, end quote. The Holy See is not spelled S A E. <laughs> just, just saying. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't think we even have to explain that one for you guys. I mean, that's filled with just so much patriot mythology. Only that one quote. That's, and that's, uh, that's a lot of, I think, what the. Uh, on rights folks uh, worship as well the so the word sea as in holy sea the holy sea also called the sea of rome right out to, <laughs> the word sea comes from the latin word sedes meaning seat which refers to the episcopal throne or cathedra <clears throat> the, the term apostolic sea can refer to any c s e e founded by one of 12 apostles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a Catholic tradition that we're, we're talking about the sea. We say the law of the sea, if you mean commerce, I mean, you, you, you shouldn't mix the, 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 the holy sea and the law of the sea. Those are two different concepts. Yeah. Another thing uh, from that show's notes that KL wrote, Quote, 1666 Sescuvet set up Roman estate trusts in England to allow management of property belonging to unknown survivors of the Black Death and the Fire of London deaths. The citizens were presumed dead and their estates were administered by the Vatican, just as in 64 AD when Rome burned and their citizens were presumed dead. It's the same game today, you just don't understand the rules, end quote. First of all, this guy's use of grammar in parentheses is absolutely awful. <laughs> um, and Clint and I, we talked through the SESQV Act in depth in our uh, SESQV video that we did on my channel. And uh, he posted it on his YouTube as well, uh, Red Pill Sunday School. So I encourage you guys to check that out. But basically, we always see these people misinterpreting the 1666 SESQV Act. They act like it's still like part of the world today and affecting you and well, okay i mean here a, a trivia question <laughs> what i mean don't we call the i mean isn't the beneficiary of a trust technically called this SGQ? i mean isn't it uh, it's a it's a position of being dead to whatever assets you're going to claim. In yeah, it's something like that. I remember reading something like that. But yeah, it's completely yeah. different than what these people are saying that it is. Yeah, so, so yeah, the Sestia Cuve Act and being a Sestia Cuve while in a trust or some other uh, agreement or arrangement or whatever, uh, not the same thing. You know, these are... these. They, they, they also call it a dead 
debt pledge, a mortgage, you know, it's, it's something that you don't actually have control of what your, what your, um, you don't have actual control of the state. You're, you're a user, you're not an owner, or you're not a, you know, it, it's, I don't know, it, 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 the confusion there is strictly the same as, I'd say, is, is, the, is Federal Express actually a federal corporation? You know, it, it's obviously no, and just because it's called the Sestu Cuve does not mean that every instance of, of Sestu Cuve comes from that particular act. If I call an act the uh, a live act, it doesn't mean that everybody alive, or anytime I, I use the word alive, comes from the 1666 alive act. You, see, you get my drift. I mean, it's just a, it's it's another patriot mythology that, when you boil it down, means hardly anything. I mean, it's it's part of history. Great, it should be understood for what it is. But to mistake it as as being somehow still, you know, <laughs> that we're still vassals of Rome. It just does not. Uh, another thing he says, quote, the Constitution is a mortgage trust, a security with sureties created by a consti con constitutor. I'm probably saying that wrong. End quote. I mean, how ridiculous is that? A, consti a, consti a Constitution is the foundational set of principles or laws that will that will set up a government. It's nothing else. Okay, it's, it's just nothing else. It's not a trust. It's not a. It is a document, not unlike a charter or anything else that says exactly what the government is going to be. I, mean, I, I, I it's all it is, and that's why I say there's been hundreds and hundreds of them <laughs> over the over the centuries and. Again, to think that ours is anything special or, I mean, just to give you an example of why it's bad, you got the, you got the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, two documents that are almost 100% opposed to each other, right? I don't know why people don't realize that. While the, while the uh, Declaration says your rights are unalienable, uh, the, <laughs> nothing, it's never used again, because that would mean you could never have a lien put against you. I mean, you, you could, your, your inherent God-given rights could never be surrendered. Well, obviously that's not the case. That's why they use inalienable, meaning they can be sold. But more importantly, what does the damn thing say? It says, you know, we recognize these rights to be unalienable, uh, gifts from God or whatever, your right to life, liberty, and happiness or property. And then you read the Constitution, what does it say? It says the same thing as every other freaking Constitution in history. It says due process of law, law of the land, supreme law. Right? They all say the same thing. It's nothing special. And it says your life, liberty, and property, your happiness can be taken away with due process of law. Well, wait a minute. You just said they're, they're God-given rights that, that are unalienable in your declaration. But then you come up with a constitution that says that those unalienable, supposedly unalienable rights can be taken away with due process of law. Which means I have to accept that some asshole in a black moo, -moo can take away my rights anytime he sees fit. No. I'm sorry. Again, I don't believe that. I don't believe in the Constitution. I'm sorry if that offends somebody, but no, I don't get my rights yeah. from the King God. Person, I get mine from God. As a person, however, I, I am fully aware that any rights I do have come from that freaking United States nation state. I don't confuse the two. And when I act privately, I know where my rights come from. If I act in an LLC, I know where the rights of the LLC come from. If I act in person in the United States, well, I know where those rights come from. I don't confuse them, and I certainly don't purposefully mislead people uh, as, as trying to sell them paperwork and, and get them even more confused because they can't tell the difference between what is, a, <laughs> what, is, what is the law of God, what is the law of nature, and what is the law of the state, and what is the law of the nation state, what is international law, what is trust law as they as you just said <laughs> what is probate what is this what is that um again you hear these terms instinctively for me and i don't know why i'm so special 
I want to go and I want to learn about him. So I look him up, I study him, and I'll even try to teach him if I, because I know if I can't teach it, then I don't understand it, right? So why don't you do that? Why don't, why don't you people do that? Why don't you go look it up? Why don't you learn about it before you before you take a step? That's all I asked in the first place. Don't 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 let this get out of control, because there's all kinds of people out there looking to make money off of your exactly. By the way, I'm uh, when I have time to work on it, I'm going to release a free trust class for people. So you can learn the very basics. Um, as of right now, you can go on my YouTube channel. You can. I got a few different videos going through the basics, but I'll, I'll have it all in one course for you guys available here in the next couple of months sometime when I have some free time to make that. So anyways, to continue, um, quote, this is from KL again, quote, Bank of England bought the debt and then s sold it to the French for or re... Uh, I had a typo in here. Something involving the French from the 6 million francs we borrowed and agreed to restructure the debt. Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which, by the way, that didn't even exist back then. <laughs> we also did a show. And, um, and we, we also did a show uh, where we looked it up and, again, Countries don't declare bankruptcy. So when you hear uh, the history that you'll hear from the Von Wrights people and all that, where you had the United States has had three bankruptcies, and it's probably, they'll say it's 70 years apart because 70 years is what's required for there to be a you know, required new, new assessment or new, new bankruptcy has to be required. And all based on one statement that... Uh, that uh, the disgraced congressman made in, in, in as a colloquialism, he said, uh, we are standing here today in the, the largest bankruptcy of the United States. He was, he was being colloquial, he was being, you know, metaphoric, um, but people actually take that as literal, even though when you look and you just do a simple search, you're gonna find out, no. Right, how, how can you go bankrupt to yourself. That doesn't make any sense. Well, and, and there again, does it trust? And I honestly don't know the answer to this, but I'll ask, maybe you know, maybe you don't. No. Nah. Do trust going bankrupt? Okay, well, he says the country's a trust. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just like... <laughs> it's yeah oh, oh exactly it, it can continue so i got a few more and then we'll wrap this up <laughs> quote air jurisdiction by the way guys i have a hard time saying that word jurisdiction i heard, saw some trolling comments months ago on clint's channel like oh you can't even say jurisdiction right i'm sorry i'm asian i can't say some words properly okay i try <laughs> all right so air jurisdiction <laughs> oh god that's hard uh, of law is trust law same as a classic, a classical, uh, that's another one of those words I can't say because my Asian mouth. Ecclesiastical. Can you, can you tell me, before you go, can you, can you tell me, before you go on, can you tell me where I can find anything on air jurisdiction other than the, the FAA? Air F yeah. What is it? The Federal Air Marshal? Yeah. Uh, what is air jurisdiction? That is, that is, again, a made up or colloquialism for something but it's not a true, there's, there's international air law, there's, you know, the principle of sovereign airspace, but to say that there is something called air jurisdiction and land jurisdiction doesn't quite. <laughs> there's nothing that gives that validity, uh, but it continues. Air jurisdiction of law is trust law, same as ecclesiastical canon law. It's God's law, the highest form of law on the planet, end quote. Well, where have we heard that one before? Definitely from David Strait. So again, I mean, he's just repeating the same stuff. Now, another one, quote, elites run everything on trust law. That's why I teach trust law. 
And then, <laughs> end quote. But, 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 when you say that, what you're saying is private law, in other words, that the trust, I mean, it, there is no trust law that the elite are, I mean, there is no trust. Clint, are you there, buddy? Hey guys, so one of our internet connections got interrupted and unfortunately because of that the recording on my end stopped so i'll pick up where we left off and i'll finish this off real quick so like clint was saying there is no such thing as trust law as a category of law right trust law just means that that's the government governing law in the provisions in the trust instrument that the grantor wrote in intents, right? That's that's the only application of trust law. But again, it's not this broad term like these gurus like to describe it as. <laughs> so let's go back to the quote KL says, quote, elites run everything on trust law. That's why I teach trust law, end quote. Where is the so-called facts or proof of anything KL says? <laughs> let's go back to the quote, elites run everything on trust law. Again, I don't even have to explain that. You guys already know by now. Elites don't use trust for everything they do. They use trust, sure, they definitely use trust, but it's, tr remember, trusts are for estate planning purposes only. It's not this magical remedy for every little thing in life. It just, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> All right, so here's the next quote. Quote, the United States is an unincorporated company just like hiring a HOA now to perform lawn care services, end quote. <laughs> so notice that first part, unincorporated company? Yeah, that totally makes sense. <laughs> unincorporated and company are two different things. And he's describing an HOA as an unincorporated company. That's very incorrect. That's a category error. HOA Homeowners Association is a private association. That's the legal structure of a homeowners association. <laughs> so to say that's unincorporated company, that just doesn't add up. And this clearly demonstrates not only does he not know how trusts work, he doesn't understand how private associations work. So <laughs> this is pretty bad. Now, just because I have a company doesn't mean it's a corporation, right? Like just like a limited liability company, that's not a corporation but it is, has domicile in a state, right? So therefore it's incorporated in XYZ state. But remember, incorporated doesn't mean it's a corporation. I like to use Clint's metaphor where if I'm making brownies and I incorporate butter to as part of what is one of the ingredients to make the brownies, then that's not the same thing as some people think, oh, well, that's a corporation. So just to clear that confusion up too. So technically, yes, companies are incorporated, okay, in a state, and it has domicile in a state, right? <laughs> so there is no such thing as an unincorporated company. All right, so the next quote. Quote, I use trust law just like they, the elites do, which means they're not susceptible to those other jurisdictions, end quote. <sighs> Again, here's him using the term trust law incorrectly, just like all these other gurus. So he's not really unique in that way. All these other people do the same thing. Let's go back to the fact that all states have adopted the Uniform Trust Code. All states have statutes for trusts, meaning all trusts are statutory. Just like a company, a trust has to have domicile in a state to make it a valid legal trust instrument, right? Otherwise, it's not going to hold up as a valid trust, especially in court or the bank for that matter. So because of that reason, the states have statutes on trust. There is no such thing as a common law trust or a non-statutory trust. OK, and KL, he, he doesn't use the term common law to describe his private business trust, which, again, that doesn't exist. 
but he tries to describe it as a non-statutory trust because of the reason why I just went over. There is no such thing as common law trust, non-statutory trust, constitutional trust, or pure trust. Those are all scams. But just because states have statutes on trust, that's not a bad thing. You got to use the muscle of that and make sure that your trust has the right provisions so that that way your trust instrument can be valid by any third party seeing it and it'll hold up and distribution can happen successfully, can be administered successfully, right? Now, the next quote K.O. says, quote, the first trust was a republic. The second trust is a democracy, end quote. <laughs> so this is pretty bad. Uh, like Clint said, there's nothing special about a republic. Every country in the world is virtually a republic. You know, you got the Republic of Russia, you got the Republic of China. So you're not going to find a remedy in the fact that there is a republic. Second of all, whether we're talking about a republic or a democracy, a nation state cannot be a trust. Trust is only for estate planning purposes. <laughs> so this is a category error on KL describing the nation state as a trust. It's definitely not. It's a corporation, but it's not a trust. All right, so next one, quote, 1929 stock market crash, parentheses, 1860 plus 70 years equals 1930, end parentheses. Another set of parentheses, HOA debt now 4.4 billion, end parentheses. Next set of parentheses. <laughs> this guy loves his parentheses. HOA bankrupt again. The international bankers agreed to restructure the debt again in 1790. They got legal title to all federal land and buildings. In 1865, they got legal title to all state-owned land and buildings. Now they get the 48 governors to agree to pledge, end quote. <laughs> so here we are again with the 70-year bankruptcy thing that these alternative law gurus have made up, literally. There is no evidence. You know, he likes to say the international bankers agreed to restructure the debt in 17, 1790. Well, where's the evidence of this secret meeting in 1790 where they decided to restructure the debt? And the fact is, there is no evidence. Second of all, like we've gone over before, nation states don't go bankrupt. They can't, they never have. What? <laughs> they don't go bankrupt, they go insolvent, which is two major differences, okay? How can you go bankrupt yourself <laughs> as a nation state? And like Clint was saying, yes, one time a city official said we're dealing with the bankruptcy. I think it was a governor maybe. We're dealing with the bankruptcy here, but he was speaking, uh, he actually misspoke. He was speaking colloquially. Countries can default on debt, but they don't go bankrupt, right? Now, another thing about him saying legal title to all federal land and buildings in 1865, look, the nation state does not need legal title to land. They, they're far beyond that. This is more macro than just titles, okay? And this is Kale demonstrating he doesn't know how property rights work in a macro setting like a nation state. Why would they need titles to land when they have eminent domain? <laughs> I mean, that's far superior than a, any type of title, right? Or even liens for that matter. So, all right, another one, quote, there are certain courts for people like me that are union state citizens. I can get my remedy in a different courtroom, which I should. In other words, the court, the Republic is still here, end quote. <laughs> so again, I won't repeat, you know, the stuff Clint and I discussed about the Republic. There's nothing special about that. You guys get that by now. But where, where is this evidence that KL is saying that he goes to some special court, right? I mean, where is this special court located? Who, who is adjudicating it? Who, <laughs> who's running this? The, the answer is there is no such thing as a different courtroom for people like him, as he says. And again, there is no such thing as a union state citizen. <laughs> it's completely bogus. Go look in USC and see what defines a United States, go see what defines a citizen. But there is no such thing as a state citizen. Everything is federal. That's probably the worst quote out of them all that uh, Kale has said and I would love to see his evidence of this special court I would love to see the special court documents of where this is and you know how these cases have gone and the history of any cases like this 
where it goes to some special courtroom as part of the Republic. All courtrooms are part of the Republic, so there's nothing special about that. So you can find Clint's work on his new website, privateunderground.club. That's where he has all of his work now posted. All of his documentaries, his videos, his books. He's got an audiobook now on the straw man. Clint is so censored, he has to go private. So this is his new website. We will see you guys next time.